Greetings, Poke fans! Michael here, and Pokemon have had height and weight data in their Pokedex entries ever since the Pokemon games first began back in red and blue. Since the 2D sprites gave no indication of a Pokemon's true size, that height and weight data was helpful in imagining what these creatures would look like standing next to you. However, as time has gone along, a lot of people have realized that several Pokemon sizes don't make very much sense. Whether due to being comically small, shockingly big, or scientifically illogical. I thought it would be fun to compile a list of those instances, so that's what this video is. 20 Pokemon sizes that are just completely absurd. By the way, I should note I am going to be using the silly Imperial units since I'm American and that's what I'm used to, but for those of you enlightened souls who use the metric system, I'll include some on-screen conversions whenever I speak an Imperial unit out loud. But before we dive into the list, this video is sponsored by Amino, and I am sure you've heard of Amino by now. It's the best place out there to join and take part in communities for any specific interest you could think of, like Pokemon that I'm a part of, there's My Hero Academia, Super Smash Bros, NASCAR, writing, guinea pigs, and pretty much anything else that you could think of. But what's extra exciting about Amino is that they just launched their brand new stories feature where you can watch short form video content that's really well thought out and heavily edited stuff like my videos that I make here. In fact, I just posted an Amino story about five Pokemon that I hope get evolutions in Pokemon Sword and Shield that I didn't discuss in my recent video about the same topic. So go download Amino for free using the link in the description below, search up MNJTV under users, follow my global profile, and watch my new story. That story will not be the only one. But now that I've covered that, don't forget to leave a like on the video and let's dive in to some crazy Pokemon sizes, starting with heights. Venusaur's size is listed as six foot seven, but in the Let's Go games, it is visibly shorter than the protagonist when following them outside of battle. Now I understand that size varies in Let's Go, but my shiny Venusaur is six foot five and is still shorter than this supposed child protagonist and also this Polyrath that's supposed to be four foot three. Nidoking is often viewed as this massive hulking monstrous beast because that's sure as heck what it looks like. However, its listed height is only four foot seven, the average height of a 10 year old boy. So maybe Nidoking seems more impressive to the kids playing the game, but to adults like me, that is tiny. When I think of Kling Kling, I picture this big floating mechanical assembly that's just this imposing conglomeration of engineering. But it turns out, it's kind of small. Kling Kling is only two feet tall, which is a very disappointingly small piece of equipment. Florgis is also disappointingly small. I suppose I should have seen this coming since its pre-evolutions are extremely tiny, but I don't know, I guess I just pictured Florgis being about the size of a grown woman since it kind of looks like a grown woman. However, Florgis is only three foot seven. Lucario is also comically small. I never expected Lucario to be taller than me because basically anytime you see it, it's portrayed as shorter than its trainer. However, I didn't realize how small this guy is. He is only three foot 11. He is a tiny little puppy on two legs. It's <laughs> what? Another undersized fighting type Pokemon is Machamp. It is only five foot three. Now, I don't mean to throw any shade toward my short kings out there, but come on guys, it's Machamp. It's supposed to be the pinnacle of athleticism. I should be looking up to it, both figuratively in regards to its physique, minus the extra arms, and literally. But no, I'd be looking down at it. It carries me, but is shorter than every single NFL player out there. That doesn't make any sense. It's a bodybuilder. It should be big. Groudon is also smaller than I think it should be. Now, Groudon is by no means a small Pokemon. Its listed height is 11 foot six, but that just doesn't seem big enough to me. It created the land, yet is shorter than Naganadal? I don't know. I feel like it should be closer to a kaiju sized creature not something that could actually fit here in my office. Now let's talk about some Pokemon that are surprisingly large. 
Haunter, for example, is five foot three. Now, that's the same height as Machamp, so that doesn't seem too crazy at first, but Haunter is wider than it is tall, so that makes it huge. Also, two more amusing facts about Haunter's size. For one, it's taller than Gengar is, and secondly, it is tied with Ghastly for the lightest Pokemon of all of them, coming in at only 0.2 pounds. Dunsparce is four foot 11. Now, to be clear, that doesn't mean that it would look like this next to me. It's been made very clear over the years that Serpentine Pokemon are measured head to tail, and Dunsparce counts as Serpentine since it's based on a snake. However, that's still pretty freaking big. Like, you could stand on Dunsparce and surf on it, assuming it could float. I had always pictured Dunsparce as this kind of little worm guy, but no, it's a it's a big dude. Furret is another large serpentine Pokemon. At least, it's gotta be considered to be serpentine because its height is listed as five foot 11, just an inch shorter than me. Now, if it's stretched out head to tail next to me, yeah, I, I see how that would make sense, but if it's not considered serpentine, no, 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 there is no way that Furret is not considered to have a snake-like body. Oh my God, oh my God. That means that next to me, Furret would look like this. That is horrifying. Jellicent is an appalling seven foot three. That is enormous and horrifying. Imagine this giant Pringles face staring down at you, ready to kill you. No thank you. Hariyama though, is even taller than Jellicent, coming in at seven foot seven. Considering how much of a wide boy Hariyama is, that is just, yeah, that's just massive. It takes up the whole freaking room. That's bigger than Snorlax. Another surprisingly large serpentine Pokemon is Seviper, whose length is listed as eight foot 10. Now, I think the reason I wanted to include it in here is because I have been conditioned to think that Seviper is very small, since it always shows up so freaking tiny in Pokemon Go. However, in the anime, it's shown with a head as big as this entire girl. It is wildly inconsistent, and I have no idea how big Seviper is actually supposed to be. Delmise is an astounding 12 foot 10. Just think about how huge that is sitting next to you. You would have to crane your neck completely up to be able to look it in the eye. I remember reading Delmise's height not long after Sun and Moon came out and being just absolutely floored, but then I learned that actually anchors can be really freaking big, so it kind of makes sense, but it's still really surprising. And the final Pokemon whose height we're going to be focusing on, Yaveltal. For the uninitiated, we pronounce Eveltal as Yaveltal and Arceus as Arcus here on this channel. If you don't know why, watch Pokemon Talk. Yaveltal is an astounding 19 feet tall. Now, some people believe that Pokemon with large wings should be measured wingtip to wingtip. What is their wingspan? However, I'm not really a fan of that idea since it gets really confusing as to which Pokemon you measure the wingspan of and which one you measure the height. Like Ultra Necrozma, do you measure its wingspan or do you measure it from foot to head? You could go either way, so I think you should just go with the more logical method, which is foot to head. Anyways, if we measure Yaveltal in the way that I personally think we should, which is tail tip to the top of its head, that is enormous. That is the biggest bird in the entire Pokemon world Holy crap. Now for five entries focusing on Pokemon weight. They were a bit offended that I put so much focus on their weight, but it had to be done for science. Before we do though, I just wanted to share a quick fun Pokemon size fact that's not really surprising or absurd, so it didn't get a slot on this list, but I still wanted to mention it because I think it's amusing. And that is that since solo form wishy-washy weighs 0.7 pounds and school form wishy-washy weighs 173.3 pounds, if you divide 173.3 by 0.7, that means there are approximately 248 solo form wishy-washy in one school form wishy-washy. Waylord weighs far less than it should. It is the biggest Pokemon in existence, but only weighs 877 pounds. For context as to how stupidly light that is, humpback whales, which can grow to be about the same length as Waylord, weighs 66 
thousand pounds. In a really old video I did on this channel, I did some calculations on Waylord and estimated that since it's so light yet so large, the buoyant force of air on Waylord that was in our atmosphere would cause its effective weight to drop to only 265 pounds. A couple people could pick that up and there are people who weigh more than that. Magnemite weighs 13.2 pounds, but that's not the focus of this entry. The focus is Magneton, and the Pokedex specifically states in multiple different games that Magneton is three Magnemite linked together. Therefore, you would expect Magneton to weigh 39.6 pounds, three times as much as Magnemite, right? Haha, <laughs> wrong. Magneton weighs 132.3 pounds, which is 10 times as much as one Magnemite. What? Bergmite is a three foot three iceberg that weighs 219 pounds. Now at first that may seem like a lot, but in reality, it is far lighter than it should be. I did the math and a cube of ice that's sides are as long as Bergmite is tall, three foot three, should weigh well over 2000 pounds. Water is heavy, guys. Even if you were to half that to make it more accurate to Bergmite's more pyramidal shape, that's still a thousand pounds, which is way more than what Bergmite weighs. A similar thing is true for most rock Pokemon. They weigh far less than they should. One example is Onyx. It weighs 463 pounds. That is stupid light. A cubic foot of sandstone weighs 150 pounds. And based on Onyx's size, I am quite sure that it is made up of more than three cubic feet of rock. And finally, Cosmoem. It is absurdly dense. It is tied with Celesteela for the heaviest Pokemon in existence, coming in at 2,204.4 pounds. However, while Celesteela is a large metal rocket, Cosmoem is only four inches tall. If you estimate Cosmoem's volume as a sphere with a two inch radius, that means its density is over 1800 grams per cubic centimeter. For context as to how wildly dense that is, the densest metal on earth is only 22 grams per centimeter cubed. The core of the sun is only 150 grams per cubic centimeter. Over 1800 for a little Pokemon? So there we have it. Those were 20 absurd and shocking Pokemon sizes. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you wanna check out some more of my Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. Also, don't forget to check out Amino. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, pick your fans. You gotta catch them all.